We are welcome to this evening service. And I pray as we have come both online and on ground, the Lord will bless us all in the mighty name of Jesus. So let's start by worshiping God this evening. Let's exalt and magnify his holy name. Let's thank him for his mercies upon our life. Let's glorify him. Let's honor him this evening. Let's give him the fruit of our lips for all that he has done for us, for who he is to us, for his protection upon our life, for his provisions, for his loving kindness and tender mercies upon you, upon your family, upon the church. Open your mouth and bless his holy name this evening. Father, Lord God, we worship you. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor, all the adoration. We thank you, Lord God, for life. Thank you, Lord God, for all that you've done for us. Thank you, Lord God, for what you are doing. Thank you, Lord God, for what you are yet to do. Because we know, Lord God, you are able to do abundantly, exceedingly, far above everything we can ever ask, we can think, or we can imagine. So we bless your name, Lord God, this evening. We magnify your name, Lord God. We give you, Lord God, all the glory, Lord. We thank you, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. We bless your name, Lord. We thank you, Lord God, because you are the King of kings. You are the Lord of lords. You are the Rose of Sharon. You are the Lily of the Valley. We thank you, Lord God, because you are the Alpha and the Omega. We thank you, Lord God. You are the I am that I am. We thank you, Lord God, for all that you're doing in our life. We thank you, Lord God, for the Church of God. Thank you, Lord God, for the Church of God. We thank you, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, because... Your church, Lord God, will continue to grow in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord God, for your word. Thank you, Lord God, for your word. Because your word is not scarce here in our midst. We thank you, Lord God, because every time we gather together like this, you renew our strength. We move, Lord God, from strength to strength, from glory to glory. Lord, we we'll thank you, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, because as we have gathered yet again this evening, we are going to renew our strength. We thank you, Lord God, because we know we are going to have a divine encounter with you this evening yet again. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Lord God, we thank you. We can't thank you enough for all that you've done for us. We can't thank you enough. We thank you, Lord God, for full supply. We thank you, Lord God, for full supply. We thank you, Lord God, for your word. We thank you, Lord God, for your word. You say, heaven and earth will pass away, but not an iota of your word will go until it has accomplished that which you are sent it to do. So, Lord God, we thank you. We thank you, Lord God. If this is all we have come to this, this evening, it's not even enough. We thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God, for January. Thank you, Lord God, for February. Thank you, Lord God, for March. We thank you, Lord God, for April. We thank you, Lord God, for May, the fifth month in the year 2021. Thank you, Lord God, for how far you have brought us. Thank you, Lord God, for how far you have brought us. We are grateful to you, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Open your mouth and continue to thank him. The song says we should count our blessings and we should name them one by one. So open your mouth and begin to count your blessings this evening. Begin to name it one by one. Thank him for all those things that you can remember that he has done for you. Begin to thank him. Thank him for health. Thank you, Lord. Thank him for health. You enjoy good and perfect health. Thank you for health. Thank him for healing. Thank him for healing. Thank him for deliverance. Thank him. For he says he sent his word and his word healed us and delivers us. So when he sent forth his word like that, his word heals. His word delivers destruction. So even when destruction is our head, as soon as his word comes forth, his word delivers us even from those destructions. So open your mouth and thank him this evening. Thank him for healing. Thank him for deliverance. Thank him for the victories, Lord God, that you cannot see. The victories that you cannot see that he has fought for us. He has given us victory. We have victory in Christ Jesus. So open your mouth and thank him for victory. Father, Lord God, we thank you, Lord God, for victory. We thank you, Lord God, for the victory, Lord God, that we have in you, Christ Jesus. We thank you, Lord God, for the battles, Lord God, that we cannot see, that you fought, you fight for us every day. You fought the battle for us and we have victory in you. We are grateful, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We are grateful, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God. We thank you for your mercies. We thank you, Lord God, for your mercies. We thank you, Lord God, for your loving kindness. We thank you, Lord God, for your grace. Your grace is sufficient even in our weakness. We say thank you. Even in our weakness, when it seems as if we can't climb the order, when it seems as if we can't move forward, your grace is there to strengthen us. So we thank you. Your grace is always there for us even to strengthen us. So we thank you. We thank you. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your grace. We thank you for your grace, Lord. We thank you for your grace. We are grateful to you, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We are grateful to you, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We are grateful. We cannot thank you enough, Lord. We cannot thank you enough. We cannot thank you enough. Also begin to thank him once again, even for answers. 
the team for this month finding answers to the questions of life. So as many of us that we have found answers in one way or the other, so as many of us that we have found answers even to some questions that we've always been asking, so begin to thank him for answers. Begin to thank him this evening for answers that you have found. We found answers through his word. We found answers even through the set man as the Lord speaks through him even to us as uh, every time he ministers. So open your mouth and begin to thank him for answers. Father, Lord God, we thank you, Lord God, for answers. Thank you, Lord God, for the answers that we have gotten, Lord God, even through your word. We are grateful, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord God, for wisdom. Answers come even through wisdom. It comes in form of wisdom. Answers comes in form of counsel. When you get counsel concerning a matter, is as is equal to getting answers to questions. When wisdom comes for you to know what to do part time, is equal to finding answers. Open your mouth and begin to thank Him this evening, Father Logo. We thank you, Logo, for wisdom. We thank you, Logo, for wisdom from above that you've bestowed upon us, even that helps us even to make right decisions, even when we have decisions to make. We thank you, Logo, for wisdom that helps us, Logo, even to make the right decisions. We are grateful, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We thank you, Logo, for counsel. We thank you, Logo, for counsel. We thank you, Logo, for counsel. We thank you, Logo, for divine direction. Open your mouth and thank you for divine direction. Most of us, every time we go out on a daily basis, He gives us divine direction. He speaks to us. The Holy Spirit ministers to us because He lives in us. So the Holy Spirit ministers to us even for us to know what to do part time. He says He's going to send an helper to us, which is the Holy Spirit. So open your mouth and thank Him. Thank him for the ministry of the Holy Spirit in your life that gives you divine direction. It gives you the steps to take part time. So, Father Logo, we want us all to thank you, Logo, this evening for divine direction. We thank you, Logo, for the ministry of the Holy Spirit in our life. We thank you, Logo, for how you minister to how you minister to us daily, how you minister to us part time. We are grateful, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We are grateful to you, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We are grateful to you, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father Logo, thank you. Thank you, Logo, for answers. We thank you, Logo, for answers. We thank you, Logo, for testimonies that are bound. We thank you, Logo, for testimonies that are bound. We thank you, Logo, in anticipation for the testimonies that are also coming. We are grateful to you, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We are grateful to you, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We say thank you, Logo. We say thank you, God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We say thank you, Logo, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' mighty name, we have given thanks. In Jesus' mighty name, we are giving thanks. We are also going to pray this evening. If you have any desire in our heart, as we have come to seek Him once again this evening, let's begin to pray that as the Word of God will come in for this evening, we pray, Lord God, that we will receive our own Word in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, that the Holy Spirit Himself will speak even through the set man to our lives in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Open your mouth and begin to pray that we, every one of us, both online and on ground, we are going to receive our word in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Just a word from God will take us even to where he wants us to be. Just a word from God will set us even on the right path that we are supposed to be. So far, begin to pray this evening that as the word of God will be coming forth this evening, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus Christ that I receive my own portion in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Every one of us have a portion in that word. Every one of us have a portion even in Christ Jesus. So as the word of God will be coming forth this evening, I receive my own portion in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I declare this evening in the name of Jesus Christ, that as the word of God will be coming forth this evening, I receive my own portion in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I receive my own portion in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I receive my own word in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I receive my own word in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I pray in the mighty name of Jesus Christ that my own word will not pass me by in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I pray in the mighty name of Jesus Christ that the Holy Spirit of God will speak, Lord God, even through the set man to every situation in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. To every situation in this place this evening, I pray, Lord God, that there is going to be a speaking of the word in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I pray, Lord God, that the word of God is going to address the word of God is going to address every situation. Is going to address every question here this evening in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. There is nothing the word of God cannot do. So I declare this evening in the mighty name of Jesus Christ that the word of God will be coming forth. We pray this evening in the mighty name of Jesus that the word of God will address every situation in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. For every question, there is going to be answers in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. For every problem, we pray, Lord God, that there is solution. 
there is answers in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. For every confusion, we declare there is going to be counsel in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We declare divine counsel from heaven above in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We declare divine counsel from heaven above in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We pray, Lord God, that there is going to be answers for every question in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We declare that there is going to be answers for every question in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We declare there's going to be answers in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We pray, Lord God, that everyone will receive his and our own portion of the word in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Everyone will receive his or our own word in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Nobody will live here empty-handed in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Nobody will live here empty-handed in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I pray, Lord God, everyone will have a everyone will have a divine encounter in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray, Lord God, that everyone here, both online and on ground, we have divine encounter in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And there's going, to be, there's going to be testimonies. And testimonies will abound in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. So we're also going to pray for the set man as we begin to round up this prayer session. Open your mouth and begin to pray for the set man this evening. Let's release, release fresh anointing upon him. Let's release fresh grace upon him this morning like never before in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. As he opens his mouth, we declare that oh, the Holy Spirit of God will speak through him in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Open your mouth and begin to pray for the set man. Father, in the name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray for the set man this evening. That as he comes forward, we pray, Lord God, that you anoint him afresh in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We declare, Lord God, that you will anoint him afresh for this evening's service in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We declare fresh grace upon him fresh anointing upon him in the mighty name of Jesus Christ like never before. We pray, Lord God, that as he opens his mouth, the Holy Spirit of God will feel it in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We declare, Lord God, that as he opens his mouth, the Holy Spirit of God will feel it in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The Lord God will use him mightily even for this evening's service in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And I pray, Lord God, that testimonies will abound even in this service in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Testimonies will abound even in this service in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord God. Begin to thank God for answers to prayers this evening. Begin to thank Him for answers to prayers. Begin to thank Him for answers to prayers. Father, Lord God, we thank you for answers to prayers. We thank you, Lord God, because this is the confidence that we have in you, that whenever we ask anything according to your will, you hear us. So, Lord God, we thank you for answers to prayers. We are grateful to you, Lord God. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's open our mouth and give him praise this evening. He's worthy to be lifted up. We say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Savior. Be thou exalted, O God. Be thou magnified. Thank you, Jesus. 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 There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. There's no, there's no shadow you won't light up. Mountain you won't climb up, coming up to me. There's no wall you won't kick down, law you won't tear down, coming up to me. There's no shadow, there's no shadow you won't light up. Mountain you won't climb up, coming up to me. There's no wall you won't kick down. Now you won't tear down, coming after me. Oh, the overwhelming, never ending, reckless love of God. Oh, he chases me down, fights you, I'm found, leaves the night and night. I couldn't earn it, I don't deserve it. What's you? Oh, we 
faces away down fights till I found leaves to lie denied. I couldn't earn it, I don't deserve it, but you give yourself away. Oh, the overwhelming, never end, reckless. Thank you to Jesus this evening. We say thank you to Jesus. He's worthy to be praised, he's worthy to be exalted. We say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. El Shaddai, we say thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be your holy name, O oh God. Thank you, Jesus. You are Alpha and Omega. We worship you. Love. You 
worship you, sovereign and omniscient God. In Jesus' name we have worshipped. I said in Jesus' name we have worshipped. Why don't you give God a hand clap of praise if you can? Amen. Hello, sir. See how to give me some volume on the speaker, the red button. Please, you may be seated in the presence of God as quickly as you can, please. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. Some more, please. Praise God. All right, let's see how we can do with that. Make sure every other stuff is um, muted. Can you hear me this way? All right, I'll try. Acts chapter number 14. Tools for answers. Tools for answers. If you're going to find answers to the questions of life, these tools are critical for you to have. Acts chapter number 14, let's read from verse 8. Um, can we have scriptures? Is it possible? Is that correct? Hello? Can we have scriptures? All right. Acts chapter 14 and verse 8. So I want to read a few verses tonight and we'll give it over to the Holy Ghost to do what he knows how to do best because he's the ultimate teacher. Acts 14, 8 through 10. If you found it, please stand for the reading of God's holy word. All right, so I'll just read from here. Acts 14, 8 through 10. So I'll read 8, you read 9, and we'll read 10 together. Is that fine? Wow, is that fine? All right, so I'll read 8, so read 9, and we'll read 10 together. Two, three, go. And there sat a certain man at Lystra, impotent in his feet, being a cripple from his mother's womb, who never had walked. Verse 9, please read. All right, so I guess just um, a few people are reading, so let me say it again. I'll read eight, and we'll read nine together. Not a select few. Everybody would read nine together. So I want to do that again. Acts 14, eight. And there sat a certain man at Lystra, impotent in his feet, being a cripple from his mother's womb, who had never worked. Verse nine, please read. said with a loud voice, stand upright on thy feet. And he leaped and walked. Tonight I want to teach on the subject, tools for answers. If you're going to find answers in any aspect of life, these tools are critical for you to do so. Please bear with me online and on ground. My voice is a little bit broken, but I'll do my best to be audible. Amen. All right. So please, you may be seated in the presence of God. Father, in the name that is above every other name, the name that guarantees an answer, I come today in the fullness of your spirit and your counsel. And I ask in the name of Jesus Christ that everyone under the sound of my voice online and on ground will find answers. These tools will begin to walk. Because as your word says, when you have found it, then there shall be a reward and your expectation shall not be cut off. I ask for utterance tonight like never before. Edify the church, glorify Jesus only. In Jesus' name and God's people said, tools for answers to the questions of life. So I want us to examine the text. The Bible says, speaking about a man Verse 8, let me read verse 8 again. It says, and there sat a certain man in Lystra, impotent in his feet. So I want you to observe, observe the, man's, um, the man's situation. He was impotent in his feet. Impotent in his feet. He didn't have cancer. I need to observe the issue that he had. Impotent in his feet. But something happened. 
Verse 9 is the game changer. This is the first tool you're going to need if you will find the answers. The same heard Paul speak. The same heard Paul speak. One more time. The same heard Paul speak. You can't find answers if you don't pay attention. Tool number one is rapt attention. And I've seen over time as a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ, privileged to pastor, <coughs> to mentor, and to an extent provide some level of spiritual covering. Oh, so, uh, recently I heard some people began to attack the statement of spiritual covering. That Jesus is our spiritual cover. And when I hear such things, I just know that this is a more, this is an ebullient expression of ignorance. Scripture says they watch over your souls. That's what? Who watches over your souls? The ones placed before you spiritually, they watch over your souls to give an account. Watching over your souls is what? <laughs> Excuse me. So you must make sure you don't fall into those uh, wrong teachings in the body of Christ. Yes, Jesus Christ is the focus, but he has put on the shepherds, under him as the great shepherd. Anyway, that's not my concern tonight. So over the years, standing in this office, in this holy office, I have come to observe that there's one area that the enemy cheats people, and that's the area of attention. Many people do not know how to pay attention. And in the social media age that we live in, it's become very it's, it's the normal occurrence for people to be distracted, even in church. So look at this man, he was impotent. But look at what he was doing. He was paying attention and listening to the teaching of God's word. So I want to ask a question. What do you think Paul was saying? The Bible says the same. Heard Paul speak. What was Paul saying? Can anybody guess? Do you think Paul was discussing about Manchester and Arsenal? You think he was talking about King Kardashian? You think he was analyzing what's this guy's show? Um, Steve Harvey. You think he was talking about the politics of Nigeria? What was Paul talking about? Please, if you are persuaded, let me, let me see, say something. What do you think Paul was talking about? Paul was definitely teaching. Am I correct? Speaking the gospel. But the Bible says the same, the same heard Paul speak. Now, the first tool to find answer in any area of your life is to pay attention. I have never seen somebody who is a mathematical genius who did not sit down with maths. Am I correct? You can't find, I mean, when Baba Deboye was, um, is it thesis they call it? Am I correct? Is it thesis? For his masters. So, you know, you are supposed to, I don't, if, if I'm correct, please permit me if I'm, if I'm incorrect. You are supposed to solve a problem maybe nobody has solved before. All right? Before they give you a, a PhD in pure and applied maths. Something like that. All right? I mean, not be accurate, but it was something like that. So he kept solving and solving and solving and went into the toilet. And solved and solved. Now, I want you to observe. He, he, left, he left the public and went into a toilet. So I want to ask you a question. Why did he go there? Was he pressed? Was he pressed? Are you sure he was pressed to solve maths? He needed the peace and quiet of the environment and he needed to have more attention. And then he said all of a sudden God said, move this equation here. I, some of you don't believe that. But there's a spirit in man. You see, the person that, let me tell you something, the person that found out maths, huh, found out maths because Elohim released the wave for that innovation and one man was privileged to tap into it god is the originator of maths am i correct if you don't believe it for many years in science they tried to look for the shape of the earth they searched and searched but the bible long said it he sits upon the circles of the earth so when they found out that the earth is spherical in shape they were years behind are you getting what i'm saying so he's the author of it. But notice it begins with attention. So the Bible says the same, the same heard Paul speak. The same heard Paul speak. If you're going to find answers, I've told people that no matter what the challenge is, sit down with the word of God and do not be in haste. You see, a 
oftentimes, you know, my pastor has taught me, it's not everything you see on the pulpit you talk. Just take note of it. After the service, talk to this person, call this person, this thing you're doing is wrong, this thing you're doing is wrong. So it's not everything you see, except it's a demonic interference that we have to, I mean, one time, Ken Hagen was teaching, and one woman began to shout like she was under the anointing. And Hagen knew that that was a demon who was trying to stop the word of God, and he rebuked her in the name of Jesus, and she shut up. So except for cases like that, we just see some things. But over the years, I've seen some things. You see some people get up seven times to urinate. Let's be practical tonight. No attention to the word of God. They can pay attention to anything and everything, but not, not teaching. But the Bible says this man was impotent, but the same heard Paul speak. Stay with me tonight, because I'm going to tell you what happened after Paul spoke. It's not what think happen. You will see that. Something happened after Paul spoke. Hope you can hear my voice. Something happened after Paul spoke. But first this man paid attention. If believers can only start paying attention. My pastor looked at a woman. She was having some level of cancer. I think stage 3 or stage 4. She was going to work and sometimes she would be panting and you know she couldn't make it. My pastor is a very blunt man. He said Satan is working 24 hours to knock you out. Resign from your job. She said, ah? I said, the day you fall down there, they'll give somebody the job. Resign from your job and face this devil full time. We've had situations where people took that counsel and they had the victory. We've had situations where people did not take the counsel and the devil knocked them out. There are some situations that you face full time. Do you believe that? Because the enemy is walking around the clock full time to take you out. There's something about sickness. Sickness is a circle of death. Once you are sitting... You know, if somebody is infected, the first day or the first time you observe the symptoms of the infection is not as serious as it would be in the next four days. It's walking round the clock. There are some situations you have, you have to sit down and just pay rapt attention. It reminds me of this te the testimony of this woman who had HIV. I went to Wafbeck some years ago. You see, let me tell you something. I want to say something that sounds simple but very strong. And you should never forget it for the rest of your life. There's nothing you are facing now. I repeat, somebody saying, oh, pastor, you don't understand my situation. Let me, let me say it again. There is nothing you are facing now that if you sit down with the word of God on it for months, you won't come out with the victory. victory. It's not possible. The day it happens to you, I drop my Bible, if you do it well. I said I would drop my Bible. I have, why am I saying that? I have never seen it fail. I'm a living proof. If you sit down with the word, Chris Yakulomi puts it this way. Um, how does he say? Don't stop, keep saying it. Don't stop talking it. For in the city of Ephesus, so mightily grew the word and prevailed. Kenneth Copeland puts it this way. One word from God will change your life forever. If you can sit down to find the sent word. The Bible says until his time, his word came, the word of the Lord tried him. But when his word came, the king sent for him and loosed him. So, the guy who announced Joseph to the king thought that he was the one that brought Joseph out. No. It was the word he found. That be, after all, he forgot him for some years. Am I correct? That word came into the man and brought him out. If you sit down with the word of God on the matter, it will be settled. All it takes is time. So the Bible says the same heard Paul speak, steadfastly beholding him. Who steadfastly beholding him? So who was steadfastly beholding who? Was it Paul beholding the guy or was it the guy beholding Paul? Huh? So as the guy, let me tell you something. Let me, give, let me tell you something for free. You go to some churches, you teach. And as you get to the pulpit, you open your mouth. There's utterance. Unusual flow. Some people are drawing it. The same heard Paul speak. So as Paul was teaching, Paul observed that this guy. Are you getting what I'm saying? Something is happening to this guy. You see? Oh, I wish I had time to do some things. <laughs> Don't come to church casually. Somebody can just be teaching and all of a sudden... All of a sudden, you know there's a shift into the prophetic. He looks in your direction, the same man that laughed with you before service, and says something that will move you 10 years ahead of your peers. 
I want to believe that this guy was not the only guy there when Paul was speaking. Am I safe to say that? Let's call this a church service. This guy was not the only person in church. But there was something about this guy. You know, I told you that some people like to ask questions in heaven. This is one of them. How could you be impotent in your feet and you have that thirst for teaching? Have you observed that people who are needy don't want teaching? They want their needs met. If you don't believe it, ask the beggar on the street. When they want something, they want something. You can't be teaching them things there. But this guy heard, <laughs> excuse me, Paul speak. Who steadfastly beholding him. Watch this. And perceiving that he had faith to be healed. So, let me say this now. Very controversial statement, but it's the truth. How many of you know I have an emphasis on faith in ministry? Emphasis on faith. And by the grace of God, in my little level, we've lived it and we're living it and we're proving it. Yeah? And um, I actually just came out from a faith battle. And it's working. So I know what I'm telling you. So don't think I am saying what I do not understand. Or I'm making light the subject of faith. If you want answers and you don't have faith, or should I say this? If you want answers to any question of your life, what you need is not faith first. What you need is attention. And if you pay attention, faith will come. So you hear people say things like, ah, those kind of problems. Ah, no, all those people like Baba Deboye faith, all those people there are, ah, no, those are faith of generals. So they shy away from facing the situation, but they don't know that this is the protocol to take. Just hear the teaching of God's word. Keep soaking in it. The Bible says the same heard Paul speak, who steadfastly beholding him and perceiving. So when did faith come? Bible students, when did faith come? Now, is this, does this prove the scripture that says faith comes by hearing? So, don't say I don't have faith for the situation. Go and hear. Faith will come. Sit down with scriptures and faith will come. The same heard Paul speak who steadfastly beholding him and perceiving that he had faith to be healed. So, I want to say a few things this night. A few things that distract people. Let's talk about church. You know, I can understand when you are at home and you are distracted, you are not spiritually um, um, sound enough to ward off distractions. But I don't understand how you come to church. You can sit down in an issue for six hours, discussing nothing. But you come to church, you stand up 15 times to pee. And I ask myself, where is that water coming from? So some people reply mails in church. I know what I'm saying. WhatsApp. WhatsApp is one of the greatest distractors in church. That's when the message, the person you sent a message will reply. And some of you don't know how to shut it down. Let me tell you the truth. Sometimes your word or your move comes in that moment when you are replying a text. Can I shock you, sir? I may sound a little bit old school. Now, I know that some things can happen, an emergency that you may have to respond quickly. But if you're in the habit of always replying text messages in church, you will miss out on the move of the word in your life. Take that from me for free. You should have this habit of coming to church and shutting down distractions. I am coming to church for this. And you shut down distractions. One time, somebody was calling me. On a Sunday morning, I was very offended. Somebody that somehow related to the family. So I called my mother. I said, I don't understand. Before I call this person, this person knows who I am. Why call me on a Sunday morning? You should know where I am. Number two, you can't be sending me a text message on a Sunday morning. Whether I'm a pastor or, I'm a mem or a member, you shouldn't be doing that. That's if you don't know me, it's fine. For instance, imagine my phone rings now. One day, my pastor friend, some weeks ago, I was teaching and nobody knew. Because my phone is on me. He called me. And he's the pastor of the church. <laughs> on a Wednesday, I was very disturbed. I actually thought it was an emergency. All right? Because, and after a while, I discovered he caught abruptly. So later, he said he just dawned on him. There was an issue, all right? But he just dawned on him I was, that I was on the pulpit. I have, tra and don't say I'm doing that because I'm a pastor. Okay? We have our track record too. Well, in our time, there was no WhatsApp. There was no BBM. 
So we didn't fight the devils people were fighting. When we come to church, we sit down and take notes. Not that my tab crashed. I can't take notes. There was no tab. We ate the word. And many of us are products of it. I, I, uh, I heard Pastor Bodu say something about Tunde Joda. Some of you don't know Tunde Joda. How many of you know Reverend Tunde Joda? Oh, God. Maybe you know him, but you didn't know him when he was the, well, permit me to use the word, the, <laughs> the leading church in Lagos, Christ Chapel churches. Amen. If you were not in Christ Chapel, it was like, I don't want to say something. Amen. It was, this Reverend Tunde would come to the pulpit sometimes wearing military uniform to lead praise and worship. All these things people call drum and keyboard. He's the one that started it in Lagos. Archbishop started it in Benin. People called him the Antichrist that he has backslid. How can you be? Then they call it jazz drum. How can you bring jazz inside church? Not jazz juju, jazz. That's what they call it, jazz. Then you play keyboard, then you play bass, wordly. But, but Dr. Chris Tunde Jota was the first in Lagos. So people flow. Mighty move of God. One day, somebody told Pastor Boju, we were roommates together. He finished from lag, right? In lag, as a medical doctor. He said, Dr. Tunde Joda had a workman. If you are from the workman generation, let me see your hand. Workman generation. Where you, where you use finger battery and you were supposed to buy shares in the company. You kept buying. Those people ripped us off. You should have done something that is more permanent for crying out loud. I bought, I bought, is it Tiger? Is it Flash? Is it Tudor? I'm having no two dog. Oh my God. Somebody say you were biting it, eh? You will bite it for it. All manner of technique. Uh, okay, you feel okay. I've said it before. When your tape cuts, what do you do? When the cassette cuts, what do you do? How do you join it together? You you sell tape <laughs> black. Nah. Nobody has hit the knee. There's an expert way. A woman's cortex. It will stick for life. I'm talking from experience, so forget that one. You can't buy it in the market. Especially if you find white. The cortex, boom. That, that was how we ate these things. He said, Dr. Chende Joda listened to one of Kenneth Copeland's teachings 400 times. Did you hear what I said? 400 times. That's why when he breathes, he breathes faith. You can't run away from this, you know. The same head Paul speak. Now, <laughs> excuse me, I want to say two things here. I told you I want to talk about Paul's speech, so let's go ahead. So please, can I say this? If you are the type that, you know, you have a problem, you see, you see, there's a marital problem. Hmm? And you can't sit down with the word of God and anointed teachings on marriage. You are not serious yet. That attention is the first tool you need to find answers. Attention. The same heard Paul speak who steadfastly beholding him, perceiving that he had faith to be healed. Now, do you know that one of the greatest attacks of the enemy in your life is to affect your hearing? Why? Because if it doesn't affect your hearing, he can't stop faith from coming. And it is faith that quenched the fiery darts of the wicked one, which is the devil. Did you get what I said? Oh, the devil will affect you from here. He will give you many reasons why you shouldn't come to church tonight. You know, all through the years in ministry, I've heard very, very wonderful excuses why people don't come to church. You know, but as a pastor, I relate with people at their level. There are some people I can rebuke for saying some nonsense. I say, my friend, would you get up from where you are? There are some people I will say, it's fine. How can you say, pastor, I just woke up a little bit tired and had just a little pain here. So my question to you is, sincerely, if it were work, and you had a little pain here. Will you be on the road? Since let's be saying, will you be on the road? Something is wrong with your priority. Simple. Oh, I heard when you teach messages like this in these days. Um, because you know, I told you now they say you people have short you people, know, not me. So when God wants to download something in your spirit for two hours, you will tell him I, I have short, my, my attention span is short. Do you know how many years Paul went? You know, people just think Paul just caught a vision from the Lord and went and blew up in ministry. He went to the wilderness of Arabia for how many years? Okay. I didn't say he went to Oklahoma. The wilderness of Arabia doing what? 
if God trains you in ministry in the wilderness, cold and heat will meet you there. Attention. And when he came out, the Bible says, when they, he said, when they perceived the grace of God upon me. I don't want to say something. It may be misunderstood, but I'm feeling the pull to say it. Let me have a witness if I should say it. If I don't see many hands. Just two hands. Two, okay, there's a witness. You know, be sincere with yourself. Have you observed that great people in any field answer people who are having results faster? Let me break it down. In your field, you just have one small result and you're beginning to rise. And you want to see the guru in your field. You, you will have easier access than the people who have not had any results. This is life. Oh. You may not like it. Can I shock you? Even in ministry. Mm. So I always wondered. One time in the pastor's conference, we were there. Reverend Sam, in pastor, Reverend Sam's pastor's conference. So Reverend Sam would take notes. He would sit down with his wife, take notes, and you know, people would send notes and ask questions back in the days. So a pastor wrote, he said, I want to understand, man of God. Why is it that big pastors, I will never forget that question, don't invite small pastors like us. Number one, that was error. He has made himself a small pastor for life. I can never ask that question because I'm not a small pastor. I'm serious. I'm not saying it to feel good. I'm not. I will even think it. It can't come out of my mouth. If, if, if it wants to come out of my mouth mistakenly, I will change the world. I will look for another way. Maybe upcoming great pastors. But that small pastors like us are. Not me and you. I will first shift. Thank God I wasn't sitting close to him. So Reverend Sam smiled. See his answer. I will never forget. He said, I used to have that question too. See what he said. But when you get there, you will know why. That thing is, I have it in a cassette. I will never forget. Question and answer session in one of the pastor's comments. I bought the tape. It's there. Oh God. He said, I had the question myself. But when you get there, you will know. And sincerely, I've had that question in my life. Why is it that? Can I have any with you? You understand what I'm saying? Until you begin to have results in, in a certain way, some people will not listen to you. I'm not talking about your colleagues, great people. Okay? I'm going somewhere. So, I had a question in my heart, but recently it was answered from this scripture I just quoted. Let me give you an example. One day, Bishop Bidawusa, Bishop head of one of his sons, doing well. I won't mention the man's name for you know him. If you want to count the first five frontline ministers, he should be number three or four. I heard you are doing well. And he goes, come. See me Benin. He went there. He said, kneel down. I opened the doors of the nation to you. Uh -uh. I heard you are doing well. Shouldn't you be opening doors of the nation to somebody who is not doing well? Are you getting what I'm saying? I had that question in my heart too. Although some people do it too much. There's a balance to it. Until I found this scripture. Paul said it. He said, when they perceived the grace of God that was upon me. It's scripture. Sir. It's just that you must define what grace is properly. Grace is not, oh, because I'm now riding a big car. No. But they see results. All right? Of apostleship to the Gentiles. So they believe that even though I did it, I wasn't physically with them when they were working with Jesus. They couldn't deny. So which means they would have rejected Paul without results. The first person I shared this thing with was my wife. I showed my wife. I said, see this thing, see this thing. It's in the Bible. My wife said, yeah. I said, it's there. It's there. Because she's the first person I share revelation with. If you want to survive, make sure you work at the same pace. You and your wife. Sila. Okay. I said that this is why these men behave like this. Ah, no wonder they answer you more. Because they have perceived grace. Yes. Because at that level, they don't like to waste too much time and resources. So they give it to people that will replicate it fast. So I'm no longer angry. Sure, you know, you know what I'm saying? But some people do it wrong. For instance, I heard the pastor say, I, I see the, when I walk into the car park, I know if you have grace. That's error. Grace has nothing to do with the car. 
did Elijah have grace? Huh? Yet he was going for a camp meeting. Permit me to call it a camp meeting. Trekking past a woman's house. He didn't even have a chariot. But he didn't have grace. So we're talking of grace, not car, house. That they know that you have results in this area. The, man, the woman that did now, you, you know the woman that brought him to his house was richer than him? Mm -hmm. But come and see grace. He looked at the woman. He said, do I speak to the king on your behalf? Yeah. Yeah. I will come and yarn the king on your behalf, yet I'm walking past your backyard. I can't even pass the express. My time is fast, but let me just respect myself. But we need to understand these things. But, so, stop getting angry. Is that, is that fine? I'm liberating somebody here. Don't, there's no need for anger. That pastor that asked that question is angry. That big, so, think about it, really. Have you seen a Bishop Oedipo? <laughs> Invite, you understand what I'm saying? So, it looks like that's the league. So, I found out they must perceive grace before they give you a right hand of fellowship. And it's not just in ministry. In industry and in your field. That's why you must rise. Ah, somebody missed that. I said, that's why you must rise. It's possible to get to the point where you cannot be ignored. My pastor said something during his birthday. He said, there are many people who don't like me. And I know that. He said, but you can't ignore me. And sincerely, that's the truth. You can't ignore the man. You can't talk. I know him. Except he's not in the field of ministry. There are hard and tough areas that people secretly call him. The people that call him hate him. They feel it's too hard. But I say you cannot ignore me. So I took that word. So let me say it too. You may not like me. But I will make sure you can't ignore me. That when it comes to this thing, you will say, I don't like the way it does it. But he's the only person with the answer. And that's what matters. Oh, is who can fix it. People go to. Some of you just want everybody to like you. That he puts money in your bank account or what? I'm not saying you should not be nice. By the way, can I shock you? Nice people don't succeed. Good people succeed. There's a difference between being good and nice. If I spank my son, is that good if he does wrong? But he may not be nice. Ni I've discovered this one, not from book. Nice people never succeed. If you're nice, you won't succeed. You see the way some of you are looking at me? I say, if you are nice, you won't succeed. Check it. Nice people, one, they, are, they have a high tendency to live short. They don't live too long. Because they are too nice. When they see death and God gives them an inkling, don't go. But because they have told the person, I will come for your wedding. Yet the Holy Ghost has said, don't go. But because they want to be nice, they die. Nice people don't live long. I wish I knew, I told my wife, I wish I knew this since long ago. But good people make it. So you can be doing what is good, but it may not appear nice. So because you are not always nice, people may not like you, but they won't be able to ignore you. How did I get here? All right. So let's talk about the speaking part. Please, I'm not saying you should go, in, go about not being nice and being uh, obnoxious and things like that. Too. No. Because there's still the fruit of the Spirit. Amen. But you know, even the fruit of the spirit or the spiritual aspect of ministry, when the spirit begins to move, you may not even like it. It's not usually too nice. Am I correct? Okay. Is this polite? You tell the prophets of Baal to gather at the altar and call on their God. And they are calling on their God. And you begin to mock them. Ah, maybe you went on a short nap. Oh. Yeah. Shout more. Maybe he's asleep. For a moment, that prophet just became a guru, if you understand what I mean. He was <laughs> making matters worse. I hope a guru is born again now. You understand that? He's born again, so I can use him as an example. I want the church to get to the point where we stop using people who are not believers in their feet as examples. It's the bad thing. Am I correct? Well, some of you are finding how to say, it's the truth. There are people in Zion we can use as examples in that field. Wow. I've not even started teaching. The same head Paul speak. These two, number one. What's the first two for answers? Attention. In any field, even in academic field, it doesn't even have to be in your spiritual pursuit. If you can't pay the price of attention, you can't get answers. Two things will happen if you can't pay the price of attention. You will get the wrong answer or you will get no answer. 
Oh, have you finished writing your exams? And you come out, that's when you discover the answer. After you wrote it. And the moment, immediately you begin to think, I wish I can go back, but it's past. I don't know why that always happens. Not always, but you know, you come out, then the answers begin to come. Do you know one of the reasons why you miss the answers? Who can get it in an exam? And then you come out and remember the answer. Do you know the factor that affected you? The time span. You were racing against time. So you didn't give the question adequate attention and time to look at it over and over again to find the answer. So the moment you came out of the zone where you were not pressed by time, you had the liberty to pay attention to it, to look at it and you discover this is the answer. That's life, oh. The same heard Paul speak who steadfastly beholding him and perceiving that he had faith to be healed. Next verse, please. Said with a loud voice, Stand upright on thy feet. Now, Paul spoke two times. Hear me now. The first one, Paul spoke. Am I correct? The next one, Paul shouted. Am I correct? Let's take it again. Go to the preceding verse. The same heard Paul speak. So what do you think? Let's look at this. Do you think Paul was talking on top of his voice here? All right? He was teaching. Amen? And I don't think Paul, I can, you know there are pastors that shout. Hmm? It depends on the makeup of the man, uh, uh, um, the temperament of a man, you know, affects how he, his ministry is expressed. For instance, if you listen to um, a Reverend uh, um, Papa Ayo Risejafo, if you know him, I don't think we can say he speaks. You know what I'm saying? Back in those days, not now that he's old. He would say, shout yeah, and start running around the pulpit. Shout yeah, I mean, seven times. Both drum, everybody's preaching with him. Drum, keyboard, bass, vroom, vroom, vroom. Everybody's preaching together. So that's not speaking. All right? Bishop Jakes has it in dual form. Oh, he can be a fine teacher when he wants to teach. All right? But when he gets to the hooping stuff, everybody's shouting with him. Shout, yeah, and things like that. So, but I can tell you that Paul didn't do that. How do I know? Paul was teaching one day, somebody slept and died. <laughs> Scripture shows it, it's not there. It's there, it's not there. Uh, okay. Have you seen this in your Bible? Did he have to bring the person back to life? So, grace is not by shouting, no. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I'm not saying you shouldn't shout. If that's your grace, I mean, I used to be the hoop and all of that. Okay. There's a school of thought that believed that Paul was so much of a boring teacher that when he was now sending letters, he said, calm down. He said, calm down. You see this my letter. If at one time he was about coming, he said, when I come, I will match it, what you see there, because he was a heavy writer. So he was teaching one day, speaking, and somebody just, I don't know why the guy sat at that position, slept off and died. If it was Elijah, you sleep under my ministry when I'm teaching, you will go to heaven. I'm not raising you. And what I said is the truth. Look at Elijah's ministry. You will stay there, and from there, nearly go, you, meet the, you meet the master. But Paul was a good shepherd. Went and touched the guy. But I believe Paul told him some things after service that were not recorded. Next time you sleep in church. <laughs> You know, I am not the pastor of this local assembly. I'm, I'm the apostle over this work. Your pastor may not raise you up. I may not be here. So Paul was speaking. So we agreed that Paul was just, all right? So you know Paul now. When they say Paul speaks, somebody who was quiet in his teaching, and the Bible says Paul was speaking. This same Paul that was speaking. You must know when the anointing kicks in in the minister of the gospel. Though. I have taught this over and over again. You must know when the anointing kicks in. Have you, you shouldn't do that. I'm not, that's not the focus. But sometimes, have you watched my wife when I teach? Check her. There are some expressions she makes sometimes when she knows I'm not a husband. There. You understand what I mean by I'm not a husband? I'm a, I'm a husband, but you understand what I mean? All right. Because I hear in one nation now, they are giving license for women to marry two husbands. It won't come here. Uh -uh. 
Maybe rapture would have come before he come. I'm telling you, don't come. <laughs> All right. But there are sometimes you can tell that there's, I won't say what, she, there's an exclamation she makes. She knows when the anointing kicks in. And when I prophesy under that mantle, you check her. She doesn't take it as a wife. This man who was quiet in his teaching ministry. Let, let me give you an example. Oh God. Can I do five minutes past eight? Have you heard Baba Deboye teach? The revered general overseer of the Redeemed Christian Church of God. You've heard him teach? So let's have that picture that Paul was teaching like that. The same heard Paul speak. Who steadfastly beholding him. So this guy was lame. But I just believe he just folded his arm and he was just listening to teaching. Listening to teaching. So I want to ask a question. Who was listening to who here? The lame man was listening to Paul, right? The reverse now. Watch this. Said with a loud voice. So does this look like Paul? Something hit Paul and he changed. That quiet man, the anointing came upon his tabernacle and he shouted. The man who wouldn't normally shout, shouted. The Bible says, we, no, the Bible makes it very clear. So we are not inferring it. It's the truth. Said with a loud voice, stand up straight on thy feet. And he leaped and walked. So see what the Holy Ghost taught me. Hear this. When you begin to listen to teaching on that matter, you want answers. Like this man beholding and Paul. So you are the one paying attention when you are listening to teaching. But it gets to a point where the anointing in that teaching shouts and your situation begins to listen to the teaching. See this. Go back there again. I'll, take, I'll, I'll try to make you understand. Go back. The same head Paul speak. Huh? Watch this. So the, the, the man was listening to Paul's teaching. But in the next verse, the infirmity listened to Paul's teaching. Is that clear? Go to the next one. Said with a loud voice. So the important feet in that teaching heard a loud shout. Let me, let me break it down. You have stayed to cancer. You have been listening to the word of God, listening to the word of God, listening to the word of God. It gets to a point where cancer hears a voice. Are you, you're not getting what I'm saying. This is why the word of God is the aggressor. It's not by power or by might. Just submit yourself. Soak in the word of God. It will get to a point. Cancer will hear something. It was the man listening. But after a while, the impotent feet responded to the loud voice. Your weakness will respond as you soak in that word. You will, your weakness will just hear something. The cancer will just hear something. And all of a sudden, you just find yourself without effort. You are walking over the problem. So there are two speakings here. The teaching of Paul and the roar of the anointing in his teaching. Hmm. In every service, if the man or woman is anointed that is preaching, in between his teaching, there will be a roar of the anointing. And guess what? Not everybody hears the roar. As he's teaching, somebody will just hear it is time. Or maybe he just gets to a point he says, now in the name of Jesus Christ, no more delay. Some other people will just say amen casually, but somebody will hear the roar. And your situation will just respond to no more delay. I'll take five more minutes like I, I asked you and uh, I want to give you the next two. The next two for answers. I'm not done with attention, but because of time. I'll just give you two tools. Correct prayer. I didn't say prayer. Correct prayer or correct praying. I'll give you two physical examples and I'll close. The first example I'll give you is this. There was a man that, we, that I read after. Serving the Lord. How many of you have heard of people they call faceless prophets? They are not too popular, but they've done things for the kingdom. Some of them like uh, Reverend Musi Madugba. I don't know if you know him. I mean, these are generals. Dr. Paul Austin Ukachi. You don't know them. They're there. They till the ground. I saw a note from an old time prophet. Whether the CAC move or so. He said, we are here preaching in demonic territories. And it's like it's not working. People are not getting born again. But we are sowing the seeds. Years later, some pastors will come here and plant churches and their churches will explode. They will think it's them. It's not them. 
said that because I always like to find the scripture for something. And I saw in the Bible where it says, I have sent you to reap where others have sown. In ministry, yeah. You can come to, there are some people that are pastoring, oh God, I wish I could teach your ministry. That's why I don't compare pastors. Some pastors are pioneers. They are digging the ground in the space. Some people just came to reap the harvest of somebody, something that somebody has pioneered. The revival in Elisha and all of that. Piety. I was shocked to discover my, my pastor sat in Piety's teaching. Was taking lecture. No wonder now. Waloke was there. Adeboye was there. Who else again? Uh, 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 um, David Ogweli was there. Name them. So this man was seeding the next generation. But it, it, when he died, only one, I'm sorry to say, one, 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 one pastor was very smart. Adeboye said they should give him the privilege to buy the casket. There's a reason why some people walk in some kind of anointing. Zone. And so the daughter of Elton gave him the privilege to buy the casket that Elton was buried in. Ah. Let me not propound the doctrine there, but you know that Abba. No. Only one. I, was not, because I watched the document. It was a documentary. It said, when pastor, then he was pastor, Enoch Adejirai Deboe asked me for the privilege to buy the casket. I said, why not? I said, ah, ah. Same way he went to Kenneth Hagen camp meeting. Nigeria said he wanted to see Kenneth Hagen. And you know those men are humble. He stood up. What do you want to say? Can I have access to publish your tapes in Nigeria? This one say, can I have access for your books and magazines? And if you know Kenneth Hagen's magazines in the 80s, which I still have it in my father's house like this, from top to bottom, piles like this. World of Faith magazines. It was one of the treasures in my house. The only thing I stole from my father was his books and his magazines. I wasn't too smart enough. I will hide it in my cupboard. He will go and pack it back. Till today, he has not asked me about stealing his books. He's not stealing now. He says he's stealing. In the same house? He's boring. He knows. He just came out. I just came on there. I didn't see it again. And I couldn't ask because it's not my own. When they go to the boy, he's stone. Um, some of you have heard the story. We've heard the story since we just came out on social media now. These men are not riding on lock. They are riding on light. What do you want, young man? Because he was a young man then. I want what is on you. The first thing that Hagen said was clear the room. He said, you, answer him, give him books. You, give him tips. You, kneel down. Landed on him, he laid on the floor. He said the only thing he heard was he saw his hands. Can I get his hands on his stomach? I've never read it. On his stomach. Praying in other tongues. Then you wonder why Lekki 98, 2 million people gathered there. It's not by. They don't wish those things. That's attention. The same David Oedipo was sitting in a um, uh, Kenhagen camp meeting. He said nobody knew him, so he couldn't even near the front. It's when they know you, they give you pastor seat now. He was seated at the gallery, and all of a sudden, he said, Ken Higgins' countenance changed. I believe he was the only one that saw it, because maybe other people were just dancing, crossing their legs, and <laughs> listening to good teaching. He said on the balcony, his face changed like that of a baby, to that of a baby. And he saw oil dripping from his head in life, down to his cheek, and something from him shot at him where he was. And he heard my son, David, whether you believe it or not, Something is in that man. My son, David, the button has been passed to you. If you don't believe that is the apostle of in this time, at least in this territory, even his spiritual father acknowledges that this man is the apostle of faith. So how did I get here? So I was giving you an example. Correct prayer point. One of the great men of God prayed a prayer who was not very popular. And he said, ah, his wife was very sick. There was an attack that came to his wife's life, on his wife's life. And he told God, even if you don't heal her, I'll still preach and serve. I'll preach the gospel. She died. Hear me now, this is very sensitive. That's a good prayer. That's a nice prayer. 
but it's a wrong prayer. Why do I know? The Bible says when somebody is sick, it is the prayer of faith, not the prayer of consecration. That prayer was the prayer of consecration. That whether or not you do it, I'm still for you. But what the woman needed was the prayer of faith. If you are going to find the answers by prayer, people think, well, we just pray. Just pray. People say, I've been praying, praying, praying. What kind of prayer have you been praying? There's a prayer of inquiry. There's a prayer of consecration. There's a prayer of worship. There's a prayer of petition. There's a prayer of faith. The woman was sick. What she needed was not the prayer. And you must be careful when you're under the anointing and you say some things. That no matter what happens, even if she dies, I will continue. So let me bring it closer to your doorsteps. How many of you heard of when Bishop Wedebo's wife was sick? She wrote a book on it. There's a CD of it, Rescued from Destruction. I have a copy of Read It True. So what I'm telling you is inside the book. And I'm, I'm, I'm sure you've heard it now. Do you know that she was so sick, Osborne laid hands on her. Adeboye came one day and said, fly my daughter out of this nation now. All manner of interventions. Her skin was, she would stand up and her skin would be peeling, falling off her body. That's how terrible. She said she saw death. Do you know, sir, I'm sure you've heard about it, that Bishop Oedipo was going about preaching. Huh? See what he said. I'm sure you've heard this. That you heal her or not doesn't change anything. You are still God. How many of you have heard him say that? Now, go back and do your study and find this. Nothing happened until he came back one day and saw that the woman was dying. And he knelt at the bedside and he said, prove to the world that you sent me. He broke What I'm telling you is not for this. You have heard it. It's everywhere. Go on social media. You see it. He prayed two prayers. People listen. They just shout, but they don't get instructions. That you heal or not doesn't change anything. I'm an addicted lover of Jesus. She was still dying. She said, when I, my husband knelt by, by my bed, and the only thing I heard him say is, Lord Jesus, prove to the world that you sent me. Is that faith? He broke. Pray the right prayers for correct answers. Stop praying the prayer of concentration when you're supposed to be consecration, when you're supposed to be praying the prayer of faith. For sickness is not a prayer of consecration. No? The Bible says the prayer of faith will save the sick. That's the prescription for sickness. That's the prescription, prescription for disease and death. The prayer of faith. When the Holy Ghost began to teach me these two things, I was like, my God. He prayed many prayers. Many people prayed, though. Many people laid hands. He said, I'll still be doing my job. He was going to. The woman was dying. He was preaching. They would fly him. He was flying. He said, I was busy. And she knows. She knows. I love him. I love the Lord. That you heal her or not, which is true. That's the prayer of consecration. And God respects that. But if that situation is going to change, it's the prayer of faith that will save the sick. He knelt down, proved to the world that you sent me. I personally believe that's when there was a reversal from death to life. Because, because I sent you and you are now making a demand on that calling and that grace. Your wife won't die. Yeah. Pastor Tony, has many people lost, lost their spouses like this? Yes. Don't allow me to go into details. My pastor taught me when you see sickness, it's not a joke. He's the one that taught me that sickness is working 24 hours to take you out. So you fight it. Stand to your feet. Somebody here has been praying the wrong prayer. Pastor, how do I know the right prayer to pray? Go back to the teachings, find it, meet the media. I have done teachings on types of prayer, far back as Parisona. So that you know the right prayer to pray. You need a job, there's a prayer. You can't be praying the prayer of faith, quote unquote, for a job. What you should be praying for a job is the prayer of what? Inquiry. Which one? Jesus. Because there's a way that cement right onto a man. But the end is death. You've seen people who took a job opportunity and they traveled out. My brother, they traveled out and that was it. They just went out. Because they didn't ask the Lord. I think I taught this morning. How many of you are morning devotion this morning? I mean, I was so amazed the kind of feedback I got. Do you know?
know that the fact that the salary is higher does not mean you should take it. Ah, this kind of pastor, they don't like pastors like this in this generation. How can he come with a bigger package and you say no? But do you know that sometimes you get a salary of 200,000 naira higher does not mean that you should go. You should ask God, should I go? But instead of you, when you get the increase, some of you now switch to the prayer of thanksgiving. Father, I thank you. No, you should be praying the prayer of inquiry, not the prayer of thanksgiving. Some of you start thanking God and you've shocked and miss. Thank you for this, Lord. Thank you. Have you asked him if he's the one? So the wrong prayer will bring the wrong answers or will get you to the place of no answer. If you're going to find answers, start praying the right prayer. There's what the prayer of thanksgiving will do. When it is insufficient, the prayer of thanksgiving will bring multiplication. Did you see that in the Bible? Prayer of thanksgiving will, will multiply things. Prayer of faith will save the sick. Prayer of accuracy, prayer of, uh, 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 of inquiry will bring accuracy and speed. David said so. Shall I pursue? And he said, pursue, overtake without fear, recover. Prayer of inquiry. And guess what? That guy went to battle, recovered everybody, and nobody died because of the prayer of inquiry. You're going to lift your hands tonight and ask the Lord for grace. From today, you're going to have these two tools. The grace for attention to the word of God. Whether you're in church or outside church, attention to teachings. Some of you who have dropped the habit of listening to messages, go back and get them. Go back and get them and listen over. Play them in your car. Play them when you are asleep. I'm telling you what I do. Just let it get into your subconscious. It will get to a point where the impotent feet will hear a loud roar of the anointing. And we ask for the grace to pray the right prayers. Not when we are in situations, the grace to pray the right prayers. Not to panic and pray the wrong prayers. Somebody receive that grace tonight. Somebody receive that grace tonight. Blessed, blessed be your precious and holy name. In Jesus' name we have prayed. I said in Jesus' name we have prayed. Father, tonight we've come before you in this short time of sharing. Amplify these words in the hearts of your people. I said amplify these words in the hearts of your people. Let us start praying correct prayers for correct answers. Let us start having the grace to pay attention to the teaching of your word. Blessed be your precious name. In Jesus' precious name. I said in Jesus' precious name. Somebody celebrate God in any way you can. Hallelujah. Glory to the head of the church. Amen and amen. All right, so we'll receive Mr. Kuli as he benedicts the service. Amen. God bless you. Please remember money devotion tomorrow. Promises to be a blessing. Jesus is Lord. Amen. Uh, let's package our offerings and our tithes. Everything we've come to honor God with, let's package it as we pray. Father, we thank you for the privilege to give to you. We thank you for your blessings upon our life. We are grateful to you, Lord, in Jesus' name. As we pray this, we pray, Lord God, it will be used for the propagation of the gospel in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And I pray, Lord God, that you multiply our seeds in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, morning devotion continues tomorrow, 6 to 6.20 a.m. In the morning, tomorrow and Friday. So let's enable to join Pastor in the morning devotion. Also, Sunday service, workers were to meet 8.30 a.m. And service start by 9, 9 to 11. As we come, the Lord bless us in Jesus' name. Let's turn to our feet as we close the service. So say to your neighbor, for you oppose all things. By the word of his power. And because he upholds all things, he will uphold you. Amen. Amen. Blessed in Jesus' name.